All right, guys, welcome back to uh, another video. We're doing a camping 101 type thing. Uh, I get a lot of questions on, you know, what, what gear do I really need? What should I spend my money on? Where should I uh, go cheap? Where can I go cheap? You know, because, I mean, this stuff is expensive, you know, so you want to make sure that uh, you spend your money wisely, you know, so that you can get the best bang for your buck and that you don't feel like you've just dumped, you know, your life savings into going out and sleeping in the dirt. First and foremost, we should talk about uh, the three most important pieces of gear, in my opinion, which is, um, you know, your tent, your sleeping pad, and your sleeping bag. Those three things are the, th are the most important, in my opinion. Those are the ones that you should not skimp on. Uh, you should buy the very best that you can afford on those. Uh, I wanted to make sure that we had a decent, I don't want to say selection, but just you know, size comparisons, as you can see, the two different sizes here. Uh, this is a Kelty four-person tent. I believe that's what it is. Yeah, Trail Ridge 4. I have had this tent for, I'm going to say, in the neighborhood of 12, 13 years. It was the first tent that I bought that I spent re good money on 12 or 13 years ago. I think it was like 200 and some dollars. Never in my life had I had spent that much on a tent before. It was, it was always, you know, a Coleman or something like that, which are fine. Don't get me wrong. They're just fine. Um, you know, maybe 50, 60 bucks. But you'd replace them every couple of years because something bad happened or seams were coming apart or um, the waterproof taping it fails, it starts to flake off, if you've ever seen that. Um, this tent right here is still 100% minus... Um, you know a couple little scuffs and bruises that it has and that's just because it's been used I can't even tell you how many times so many times and it's a good tent uh, this tent here is the REI half dome 2 plus so this is a two person tent uh, this is a four person tent now with tents a four person tent does not mean it's a four person tent a four person tent means it's maybe two adults and some gear um, or if you've got real small children or a dog uh, something like that you can fit that in there but you are not getting four adults in here without literally laying on top of one another and then heaven forbid if somebody has to get out and use the bathroom in the middle of the night um, yeah, that's just it's that's not what it, how, how it is right? that's what they say it's a bunch of malarkey right here for example prime example two person tent two plus means it's like two and some more right this tent when it's set up literally holds me my sleeping pad, my sleeping bag, no gear. I cannot get hardly any gear in there whatsoever. I can't get a, uh, uh, you know, my duffel bag that I keep all my clothes in. That has to be somewhere else. I can bring a jacket, you know, and a few things that I might need to keep warm in the middle of the night. But that's how small this is. My head touches, my feet touch, uh, and it, you know, two plus. I, you know, I don't know, I don't know who these two plus people are, but um, they're not me. That's for sure. But anyway, keep that in mind uh, when you're buying your tents, that the manufacturer ratings of how many people they sleep is absolutely incorrect. You know, I mean, like right now, as you can see, it's windy, windy, windy where I'm camping and camping. Um, and, you know, weather will drive you into your tent and it can keep you in there all day. It can keep you in there all day, all night. Rain, sleet, snow, things like that. You need to be able to uh, be in there and not lose your mind just because you're jammed in there like a sardine. You want to have some room to move around. You know, space is comfort, you know. Uh, buy a uh, three-season tent. Uh, don't buy a four-season, and then don't buy the cheapest flimsy one. You want one that has a uh, rain fly that goes all the way down to the ground uh, or close to it, and you want a just a medium amount of mesh. You don't want the whole thing inside to be mesh. Uh, you want, you know, you want the, the material, the, the sill nylon, you know, that it's made out of, you want that to come up a little bit, uh, up the sides. And that's to avoid splashing, rain splashing in that gets underneath the uh, uh, rain fly. It also helps uh, mitigate with the breezes that come through. It helps slow that down just a little bit. And it keeps the warmth in. So the less mesh you have, the more warmth you can keep in the tent. Uh, if the rain fly is a snug fitting rain fly and it becomes uh, effectively a two wall tent and then after that would be your uh, sleeping pad 
So nothing will steal the heat from your body faster than the cold ground. Um, so you need to make sure that you're elevated and or insulated. You definitely want to make sure that you buy a, I would say, a, a mid-level R insulated um, R value on the insulation, uh, maybe a three. I mean, if you look that up, the insulation values go from R zero to you know up to R I think six or seven. I don't know. Um, and those are super insulated, where the R zero has nothing. So you want something in between. So I have two uh, sleeping pads here. Both of these are uh, Big Agnes. And you can see the size difference. And the size difference uh, is not directly uh, related to the R value involved. But this, this one here is definitely a higher R value. I think this one's in the fours. Um, this one is in the threes. Uh, this one is ultra light compared to this one over here. Uh, they're both the same. They're both 25 inches by 78 inches in their in their shape and size. But as you can see, it's a huge difference when it comes to space and or if you're going to backpack or if you just need to have a small compact setup. Like So when I take off like on the UTVs or whatever, I'll take this guy. You know, uh, when I tent camp and do what we do here, I'll, this guy I'll take all day as a, you know. But in this particular case, I brought both just because I have... Um, a backup. You can catch these things when they become discontinued and they move on to a new one. You can catch them at a significant discount. So just keep your eyes open and just buy, like I said, buy the very best brand that you can afford um, and you will not regret it. Okay, I decided to come into the little cabin here uh, to talk about sleeping bags and such. So right out the gate, as you can see right here, this is what I'm using here because it's indoors. I have um, heating available. I brought uh, my own sheet, which I always have. And then this is just a down uh, blanket. This is also a Big Agnes. This is a summer bag for sure, but it's a double wide. You can kind of, you know, wrap up like a sausage in it, which is nice, um, but definitely a, a warm weather bag. And I'm gonna be indoors. It's just not gonna be that cold. And there is a little heater if necessary. This is the Big Agnes Lost Ranger uh, 15 degree bag. And this is also down, uh, down tech, like 600 fill, I think. Uh, if I was going to be in the tent this weekend, which this whole trip kind of started out that way, but um, it, it, didn't, it didn't work that way. <laughs> so anyway, so that's another option. So this bag uh, is, like I said, rated for 15. I would not take it into uh, 15 degree weather. I would not take it and expect to be comfortable at 15 degrees. We definitely, if you're gonna buy a sleeping bag, my opinion, one only, buy a 15 to 20 degree bag. And that'll, that'll get you through to a lot. Um, after that, if you start getting into, like I said, this, you know, so that makes it good for 30 or 40. If you have to get to 15 or 20, put on a down jacket, nothing, has ruined more campers that I know about than being cold at night and not getting a good night's sleep. And all those two things have everything to do with the right bag, the right tent, and the right pad. Now, you can't do anything about the sounds of rain. You can't do anything about the sound of wind uh, other than put earplugs in, which I highly recommend you do. Um, if, you know, if, have them with you. And if it's just ridiculous and it's just keeping you awake, put in earplugs. There's nothing that's going to go bang in the night that you have to be so concerned with that you have to hear every sound. Also, in the truck, I keep a, a wool blanket, an Amazon special. Uh, did not cost that much money. I think $40 or so, maybe $45. Bucks. Uh, I use that. I can use that as a top piece of insulation, a bottom piece of insulation. I also keep a cheap uh, moving blanket in there also from Amazon. If, if that was 10 bucks, I'd be surprised. And I use that as an insulation layer. Most of the time, just to insulate the uh, bottom of my tent from the cot legs and things like that. So uh, just, just keep in mind, they don't take up a lot of room uh, and, and they're there. You know, each one of those pieces is, is insulation and it's all about the layering setup um, that, that we talked about. If you have a, a cot in your budget, I highly recommend you get that. Uh, caught with a good sleeping pad. Now you've elevated yourself off the ground. 
Um, the air underneath you, yeah, it gets cold, but the ground is just, um, it just sucks everything out of you. Uh, it's, it's terrible. So anyway, take that for what it's worth. And we will now move on to the things that don't matter. Um, you need them, but it doesn't matter where you buy them. doesn't matter how you get them. doesn't matter how much you pay for them. It, it matters not one bit. All right. All right. I did leave one thing off the list when we were talking about sleeping pillows. Uh, take your pillows. Uh, take one, take five, take nine, whatever, whatever you have the room for, take that. Um, I bring four pillows with me on every camping trip, unless um, I'm doing a UTV trip or something like that where the space is at a premium. Um, then I'm only bringing hmm, two, maybe a third. I have some small blow-up pillows, which if what you're going to be doing requires you to keep your gear to a minimum, buy those, buy those small blow up ones. Uh, they have some insulation in them. They're, they're comfortable. Uh, they're not great. Don't get me wrong, unless you don't care. Um, but for me, they're not great. They, they just, they get the job done. But I bring, you know, two pillows for under my head, one between my legs and one to hug, you know, just because that's how I sleep and I sleep comfortable. And so I have not had a bad night's sleep camping in gosh, so many years, uh, just because I, I, I bring all the things that make me comfortable. If, if I have to buy something particular to make me comfortable because of a space issue or something like that, then you know what? So be it. It's more important for me to have a good night's sleep than to not spend the $45 on the little Thermarest pillow that I can scrunch up into a tiny little thing so it fits in my backpack. It's just that important to me. Whether that is important to you or not, so be it, that, you know, you make that call. So we'll move on to the basics again, like we just talked about, and I'll get some of those out and we'll rejoin you at the picnic table. Right out the gate, you have to have something to eat on. Um, and this is a plastic GSI plate. It's not very expensive. Um, you don't even need that. Paper plates work perfectly. They come right out of your house. You probably already have them. No extra expense, grab a couple. You need a pan of some sort to cook in. You know, it's not always required because you could cook, you could be a foil packet person. You can cook on the grill grates that come, you know, with the campsites. You could have your own grill grate. Um, but I recommend that you do have one pan and one nonstick pan. You need one bowl for mixing cereal, oatmeal. Um, it can be, you could do paper bowls if you happen to have those. You know, or I use these collapsible ones just because of space saving. But you can bring just a plastic cereal bowl from your house. Um, you don't have to really purchase anything. You probably already have this in the cupboard, but have one bowl. Same thing with a pot. Have a pot of some sort. Um, this is a collapsible one. This is one, you know, that can be cooked with on the fire, blah, 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 blah. But have something that you can do, you know, rice, mashed potatoes, things, you know, sides, you know. One of the best things about camping and, and camp cooking is not having to settle for a hot can of raviolis out of the fire, you know, or SpaghettiOs or, you know, or just, I don't want to call it junk food, but it, it kind of is, you know. I mean, it's like you're, you're out. You don't camp very often, so treat yourself, you know, make food, make, make good food you should probably have. Um, I always have, you know, a cup like this for coffee um, or any hot drink, hot chocolate, um, anything that you want that's hot. Um, this one is just happens to be a collapsible one um, for whatever. I mean, you can put whatever you want to take drinks of water, um, you know, you know, that's about one of my shots, you know, so shots, shots, anybody? Um, just kidding. But you need a, some kind of a cup, something to drink out of. Um, and I recommend maybe two cups and then have something larger. 99% of people have some kind of a cup in their house, plastic usually, um, of this size and of this size. Maybe not plastic on these, but of, you have these in your house. Find the oldest, dumbest one that you don't like anyway. It's got the chip in it, it's got the broken handle. Throw it in your camping box. All right. So now, this is definitely not something that you need. Out of this, literally the only thing that we need is a, a spork, 
preferably this one, like this, and you can get this in plastic, $3. And this will cover you for everything you need to do as far as you know, needing a fork or needing a spoon. Um, unless you eat mountain houses. If you're a mountain house person, then you will have to invest in a longer spoon like that one or preferably this one this one is the better one which is the sea to summit here it is this one right here this yuko let me let me take all this put it over here this yuko right here is probably the best bet for what you need comes apart fork spoon knife all three pieces you are going to need some kind of tongs doesn't matter what it is. If you're going to cook on the fire, preferably you should probably get metal. If you're going to be cooking over fire or whatnot, uh, again, cheapest ones you can find. Um, a pair of tongs, necessary. Also recommend, especially if you cook over the fire and whatnot, I recommend that you buy uh, a pair of these welding gloves. These are like 900 degrees something or others. You can grab just about anything with this. I grab stuff straight out of the oven. I'll grab the actual hot fire wood you know, that's burning coals, you know, and I'll grab it, move it around. Definitely recommend a pair of these. These are kind of one of those that's, you know, it's not like necessary, you know, you can, you can get by with just a pair of old leather gloves or something that you have laying around. But these right here have made a huge difference in my camping game. Uh, so anyway, take that for what it's worth. Uh, some kind of a big spoon, um, you know, wooden spoons, whatever you have, again, these are the things that you can take out of your house. You probably, if you have some old ratty wooden spoon that's been in your spoon drawer for, you know, 25 years and it's all waterlogged and, you know, yuck, grab it, throw it in your camping. You know, it doesn't matter when you're camping. You know, this isn't a, uh, this isn't a beauty contest deal. You know, it's a matter of just getting it done. So there's that. So what do we got here? So we've got that. We've got our spoon, our fork, knife. Um, always have, my opinion, one decent camping knife. Um, this is the Mora, They're the Morik Neve or something like that. They're from Sweden. Um, this is, it is made in Sweden. These are the best knife for the money. This is a, a stainless steel knife, razor sharp. I mean, razor sharp. These things come right to you, razor sharp. You can shave, you can shave the hair off your arms. Look at that right there. Bam, there it goes. Um, they are very comfortable to use. You can, they have a really strong 90 degree bevel or 90 degree edge right here for uh, striking uh, flints, fire steel. They, this particular one, because it's the companion, you know, it's got a short, it's not a full tang knife. It's just got a small little tang that probably stops right about there. So this isn't one that you would do a bunch of batoning with. And if you're not familiar with batoning, um, Google it. It's how you split wood with a knife. Uh, this this would not be my choice, but this is a good camping knife, and this is my normal cutting knife, opening things up with, you know, anything I need to, you know, cut open. And I, if I think this knife is twenty bucks, and it's stainless steel, and uh, you can do all the research you want on the internet about the best knife for the money this will be the answer 99.9% .9 of the time. There is no better option, in my opinion, and I don't think the internet will, tell, will prove me wrong um, for a just a solid little camp knife. And then what do we have after that? Nothing, that's it. Literally is it. Um, you've got so maybe some kind of a cooking grate, you know, to put over fires or whatnot if you don't have a grill or anything like that. There's lots of options out there. Again, some are just super reasonable. Um, um, if not, at minimum, carry aluminum foil. Have some aluminum foil with you in your camp, you know, kitchen setup. Um, you, Cause you can cover those nasty grills. Um, you, can, you can do a lot with aluminum foil. Always have a roll of aluminum foil. All right, let's clean this up and we'll move on to the next item. Oh, you also need to have uh, a way to make fire. So that should be part of your kitchen repertoire, I guess is a good way to put that. You can have um, store-bought fire starters. You can have you know matches, lighter, whatever you have um, in the house. You can bring all that, throw it in there. Um, if you don't want to spend the money on uh, store-bought fire starters, 
uh, dryer lint. Grab your dryer lint that you throw away every you know, week or whatever, unless you use laundry mat or whatever, but um, grab dryer lint. That's some of the best fire starter there is. And then throw it in with you know, any paper or um, you know, used paper place or whatever that you have. I always try to have a couple lighters laying around. I have matches, waterproof matches. Um, I have uh, flints, you know, so the, um, I'm drawing a blank on the damn name of it right now, uh, magnesium strikers. Uh, I have those around and, you know, so I always have a way to make fire. So always have a way to make fire. There's nothing worse than getting to camp and knowing you know, oh, hey, I've got, yeah, I've got a, you know, big lighter in my bag and you go to use it and it's empty or you go to use it and it won't, you know, it won't strike. I've eaten a lot of cold meals because of that uh, out, you know, in the mountains of Utah, you know, expecting to be able to start a uh, gas barbecue, uh, you know, a little portable one and, you know, and grill up some dogs or something like that. And then boom, the lighters don't work or we can't find the lighter. Uh, and then next thing you know, it's cold hot dogs. Lighting. I function under the philosophy that uh, one is none, two is one, and three is just getting started. So I recommend that you have, at minimum, one headlamp, one flashlight. That's at minimum. Uh, and you're going to need some sort of camp lighting. Maybe a, uh, well, you don't require it. You can get by with just these two items. Um, but, I, you know, lighting is comfort uh, for most people. Uh, most people don't like to be in the dark. Most people are, I don't want to say scared of the dark, but they are when they're out in the wild and they don't know what's going bump in the night. So uh, a lantern of some sort, and you can get those pretty darn reasonable. And then nowadays, especially with uh, uh, the Lucy lights and the, uh, they have these little blow up lanterns that you know, recharge solar all day and they work most of the night or at least until you go to bed, which is all that matters. Um, but have something like that so you got three pieces now for me i say have a backup for each one just because things happen you know you batteries die uh, so on and so forth uh, i have been converting everything that i have to uh, rechargeable so i for years i've had you know the battery stuff and i've had to carry around i carry around just a box of batteries for everything, you know, triple A's, double A's, nine volts, all this. And so I'm almost to the point now where I've eliminated everything that I have that's battery for my, my, my go-to camping stuff. You know, that stuff has now been relegated, you know, to the house, to the trailer. Um, just, you know, just, it's there. I don't get rid of it, obviously, because you've spent good money on it. But um, if you have it in your budget, I recommend you can buy a lot of this rechargeable stuff, again, I keep saying Amazon, but, and, you know, most of it's made in China, so if you're a made in America only guy, it's gonna get expensive. But a lot of the stuff you can just get in China um, at a very reasonable price. So, if you have that, then instead of having to carry around a box of batteries, you can have just one power station. Um, just a, this is a, what, 10,000 milliamp, probably 10,000. Oh no, this is a 16,750 milliamp, so almost 20,000 milliamp. This one right here will recharge this stuff numerous times um, and throw in a couple phone chargings on top of it. So have at least one of these, uh, just at minimum for your, um, your cell phone, just for emergencies, you know, you know, again, get the, you know, the most affordable brands you can find doesn't have to be an expensive one. It doesn't have to be the uh, power stations, you know, that, that I have uh, for, uh, you know, large consumption. But when you're doing this kind of stuff or, you know, running refrigerators, charging drones, you know, all that sort of stuff, this little guy's just not gonna cut it. There's one right now attached to the camera um, and to the microphone uh, charging as we're going because again, the, the filming, you know, uses a lot. So anyway. Have at least your three pieces, something that you can have on your head, a flashlight, you know, handheld, and then some kind of camp lighting. Um, and you can move that camp lighting into your tent at night. Um, All right, so let's talk about preparation. As you can see, I'm prepared, I'm cold. It's chilly right now. Um, you know, that's the first thing you should do before you go out. 
uh, is make sure that you know exactly the circumstances, what's the weather going to be like so you can pack accordingly. Uh, what is the uh, campsite rules? You know, are they going to allow you to buy wood or do you have to bring it? Um, if you do have to buy it, um, are you going to have cash with you? You need to have cash, you know, for a lot of those campsites, they don't take credit cards. So you need to have cash. Do you have to pay for your site once you get there? And they're going to need cash for that as well to drop it in the little, you know, they usually have a metal tube that you drop it into. Do you know what the weather's going to be like? I think we said that. Are you in bear country? Uh, do you have to hang your food? Do you have to have a bear box? Uh, do you have to have, I think in the, uh, Right where I'm at, actually, I'm at the tail end of the eastern Sierras. Uh, once you get a little further north, they require you to have a, uh, uh, I don't know what they call it. It's, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a box. It's a, it's a portable bear box that you have to have your food in. So you need to know, you know, all these things. Um, and make sure that you plan accordingly with uh, the gear you bring. So I think in the end, we may have covered most everything if i've missed something you know put it down in the comments you know just to let everybody else know um you know i'm trying to do all this stuff off the cuff i have some you know cliff notes but you know still easy to forget but let me know if we've missed some things you find things important um and uh i think we'll uh put an end to this one right now and we will move on to the next one so thanks for watching we'll see you next time